Hey everybody, back with uh, part two of the quarterback passing attempts machine learning regression model video. Um, in the last one, we got started importing the data. Um, we did some pre-processing. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk about some exploratory data analysis. Now that we have our set data set, how, what, what, what can we do to optimize the machine learning model? And then we're also going to use uh, a library called PyCarrot which is a fantastic low code machine learning library. Um, it gives you an idea of what can be done with the data set in terms of modeling. I wouldn't recommend it as like a production model type uh, library, but, but we'll definitely get some information out of it. Um, and then the last video will be creating a model from scratch with scikit-learn. So um, <clears throat> quick reminder, uh, this is our existing data set uh, and I'm, I'm just quickly removing any quarterbacks that are averaging less than five pass attempts per game over their last 10 games. So again, here's our data set. You can see player name, player team, um, their passing yards for that given game, whether or not they were at home, little information about where they're playing, whether it's uh, inside or outside, um, what kind of turf they're, they're on or grass. And then again, reminder of this EWMA, each, each feature here is exponentially weighted. So over the last 10 games, what are they averaging? And, and the exponentially weighted portion, uh, it, it weights the more recent games heavier. So if there's a trend of quarterbacks trending up in the last four or five games, then, then these numbers will be higher than if, you know, if they were doing better before in the earlier games in the window. So we can see completion percentage, uh, pass attempts, and, and we took out – Again, reminder, we took out anyone that's averaging less uh, less than five. So they had to be averaging, averaging at least five, you know, because there's there's plenty of trick plays where a running back will throw the ball once or, a, you know, a receiver will throw the ball once. We want to take those out of the data set. They're going to they're gonna manipulate the, the data set. So, um, you know, that's what we got. Some EPA per pass um, or EPA total, sorry interceptions, things like that. Basic quarterback stats, but again, exponentially weighted, looking back 10 games. So uh, this is a nifty little feature, uh, df.describe, and then we're rounding to two decimal points. So we get kind of just basic statistics of, you know, how many rows do we have, the average standard deviation, min and max, and then each quartile. So for something like completion percentage, the average is about 63%, plus or minus 7%. And this data is looking all the way back from 2001 to 2021. And I'm saving the 2022 season. We'll, we'll use that um, to test on and see, you know, if this is a, a predictable model, if this can be used for actual predictions in the, world, in the real world for gauging quarterback passes. So uh, here's the average pass attempts, about 28 plus or minus six. Um, you know, all of these things. I would use this, you know... I actually, before this video, uh, I did not remove the outliers where somebody was averaging less than five passes per game. And I found that um, the standard deviations for everything was, was much higher. So that would remove predictability. You know, if you were using this to make bets or something, obviously the wide receiver that passes the ball once is going to change the data set and, you know, um, take away from what you're actually trying to predict, which is quarterback passing yards. A um, little more exploratory data analysis. I made this heat map of which of our features are influencing one another. So um, as you can see, the more red something is, the more negatively correlated, meaning if if column A, or let's take an example here. Uh, so this is the defense's EPA and the defense's interception. Uh, I'm not sure why those would be negatively correlated, but I guess they are. Yeah. That's kind of strange. Anyway, um, so so this is a better look. Uh, the interceptions thrown by the passer is negatively correlated with the EPA of the passer. So obviously that makes sense. The less interceptions a quarterback's throwing, the more points that they're expected to add for their team. And then the opposite end, a blue, uh, a darker blue square means they're positively correlated. So let's see, something like this. Um, actually. Yeah, something like this. The passing yards of the quarterback is extremely highly po uh, positively correlated with 
uh, attempts, which obviously makes sense. The more um, attempts the quarterback's making, the more passing yards they're going to make. So this is another thing to keep in mind. There's things you can adjust in your model, like collinearity. Um, if two things are, are so highly correlated, sometimes that can influence the model negatively. Uh, and we maybe want to adjust for that. But this is kind of an interesting visual. We can see which features are influencing one another. Not so much influencing one another, but are correlated with each other. All right, here's where um, our pie carrot model comes in. So um, make sure you read the docs if you're going to go install this for the first time because PyCarrot is, is a massive library. It'll, it'll adjust every single Python library you have, the versions of those. And, you know, it might be kind of difficult. You know, it changes the pandas and the NumPy versions of everything. So um, it might mess up your normal development flow. But we're just going to import the regression portion of the library and print out our data set one more time, just get a look at it. Um, almost 13,000 rows, 32 columns, pretty big data set. So here we're initializing it with the setup function. Um, we're defining our data frame and the target, which is passing yards, what we wanna predict. Um, session ID can be any three digit number. Uh, and then, yeah, once this prints out, once we run this, it'll ask us, verify each column it'll it'll try to gauge what each column is so most of these are numeric but we also have this home flag which is uh, categorical same for roof and surface these are categorical type, uh, data types but you know all of these it prints out these are the default settings i haven't adjusted any of them um, adjusting them might give us better accuracy but you can see what you can adjust here you can do different kind of um, folding your data uh, fold it a different number of times. You can train on the GPU if you'd like. Um, normalization, which is getting everything at each column on the same scale. Um, you can transform your data, which is even more extreme. It gets everything on the same scale and tries to create like a normal distribution, like a Gaussian bell curve distribution. But obviously there's a ton of stuff you can do here. Um, but let's see. Uh, now we want to compare the, the best models. We're going to, you know, um, exclude a couple of these. We're not clustering, so we don't need KNN. And then we're sorting by this feature, so uh, this data um, accuracy metric. So here is the results. Um, I have a little presentation put together here explaining what each of these metrics is. Uh, so <clears throat> the first one is mean absolute error. This is kind of like standard deviation. It's just uh, the difference between the predicted values and the actual values the average of that error. So um, in our case, it would be something like plus or minus 50 yards. Uh, so what do we have here? Sorry. For our model, our top performing model, which is light gradient boosting machine, our mean average error is 52 yards. So on average, it's, it's uh, within 52 yards, plus or minus uh, of the actual value. So... <clears throat> Something to note about this is it's not absolute error. So if we're, if you have a model that's predicting way on the positive spectrum side of the spectrum, um, you know, way over the actual value, and then another prediction is way under the actual value, those errors may average actually average out to create something that's closer to zero. So what we want is something that is, um, you know, independent of the sign of the error. So. If we square this mean absolute error, we get mean squared absolute error, uh, mean squared error, sorry. And we can see here, you know, it's 4,461. That's not so helpful because it's squared. So if we take the root of that, we get RMSE, which is the, the square root of that. This is kind of uh, a better standard devi deviation look um, at the error of our model. So uh, in this case, sorry, I keep flipping back and forth it's 66 passing yards. So that's pretty good. Our model is within 66 yards on average of the actual value of the quarterback's passing yards. And that's independent if it's under or over. So that's true plus or minus under or over the actual prediction. So 66 yards on this model, that's pretty good. Um, you know, in future videos, after we create the model with SKLearn, we can see how it performs in 2022 and how close it is to actual passing yards um, from the season. A um, couple more metrics here. R squared is the coefficient, uh, correlation coefficient. So uh, a perfect value would be one. You know, if you plot on a, a scatter plot, uh, 
Actually, I think I have one here. If you plot on a scatter plot like this, these are the, uh, the predictions and these are the actual values. So if we were perfect, it would, our, our, our squared would be about one or closer to one. Um, 0.5 is, is not amazing. You know, our predictions tend to be off, but you can see this best fit line is, is not bad. And I think, I think that's our last one. Root mean squared log error. Um, I couldn't find much information on this. It's something that PyCarrot uses uh, as a regression metric, but um, I don't think there's much value there. And same for mean av absolute percentage error. For something like this where, you know, you can see, you can see our, our MAPE is pretty high, um, you know, 90%. On average, we're 90% off the actual value. But if you think about it, like let's say we make a prediction that the quarterback is going to throw 400 yards and they actually end up throwing – uh, sorry, let's say they, we predict them to throw 200 yards. They actually throw 400 yards. That's an error of hundred percent. So, you know, while we are still off there, it's going to kind of throw off our numbers. MAP is more relevant for things like time series data. Um, the metric that I really want everybody to pay attention to is this root mean squared error. This is a standard deviation, absolute standard deviation of our model. So plus or minus 66 yards. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't know if you would want to bet on that model, but we'll see how it performs uh, based on 2022 numbers. So, yeah, like I said, that was the light gradient boosting machine model. So with PyCarrot, we can quickly, with one line of code, create the model, train it five times, and, you know, the root mean squared error stays about the same. Here's something interesting. These are the This is the feature importance of each feature in our, our um, model. Um, you can see that actually the passing yards that the defense is giving up over the last 10 games is the most important feature, um, even more important than what the passer, the actual quarterback, is throwing over the last 10 games. So um, it seems like maybe the strength of the defense is more important than the quality of the passer when it comes to how many yards they're going to throw. And then, yeah, so these two are by far the most important. And then a couple orders of magnitude down, you've got things like completion percentage, obviously, if if the team has good wide receivers and the quarterback's putting it all in their hands correctly, then, you know, you'll get some more passing yards. The season actually that you're in uh, is a big influence. Um, the NFL has become more and more a passing league, passing first league. So this makes sense. Um, the expected points added. Expected points added is kind of a, a conglomeration of a lot of different things. So it makes sense that this is towards the top. Um other things like how many interceptions the defense is getting, how many passing touchdowns, which we can see from our correlation plot, um, is correlated to the passing yards, the touchdowns that the passer is throwing. Same with the defense. And then finally, um, how many sacks the defense is getting, big influence. And lastly, just the pass attempts, how many times they're throwing the ball. So, um, And one more thing, you can tune the model. It's going to cycle through all the hyperparameters uh, and pick the best ones. We didn't get much of an improvement, maybe like one yard on average improvements by tuning it. Uh, but, you know, here we can see the, the plot of everything. Um, I showed this already. And if you wanted to, like, look at all the evaluation metrics, you could run this evaluate model uh, function. I'll uh, warn you, though, it doesn't work super well. Like, let's see if I click on this. It'll run this. Sometimes it gets stuck in VS Code. But um, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I will uh, work on building the model from scratch and scikit-learn. And, and uh, maybe we can even get that R, uh, root mean squared error down to something like 40 yards and see how it does in, in real world. So thanks for watching.